Hey there, I'm Tucker and you're watching D&D Daily. Today we're going to be talking about the best spells for the Pact of Pain from the Damagoth. For those of you who don't know what the Damagoth is, or don't know what the Pact of Pain is, this is a new monster from Strixhaven's Curriculum of Chaos that gives us a whole bunch of creativity to use in our campaigns. The Pact of Pain feature that this Damagoth has is kind of a pseudo-warlock pact where the Damagoth, which is a demon, makes a pact with somebody and they get to cast a first through third level spell of the necromancy or enchantment schools for free once a day. However, they take 2d6 damage when they cast it in this way. The reason that the Damagoth wants to do this is because they feed off of pain. They grow bigger and that is what they consume. So anytime that they're able to have that pact and do that pain, it is going to make them bigger, stronger, it's just going to make them better. So the Damagoth's main motivation is going to be to have their pacty use this spell a lot. This means that there are three conditions right off the bat that this spell has to meet. First, this has to be a spell worth taking damage for. So the benefit of casting this spell has to be better than taking 2d6 damage, which at early levels is kind of a lot, but at later levels is no big deal at all. Second, this spell has to be something that the person will use a lot. If it's a spell like Revivify that only comes up so often, it's probably not going to be used very often, and as such, probably wouldn't be the spell that this Damagoth would choose to give to the person, even though it fits in the Necromancy School. And that brings us to our third condition, is that this must be a spell from the Enchantment or Necromancy Schools, and it has to be in the right spell range, which is a uh, spell of from first to third level. The Pact of Pain also specifies that this spell is going to use your intelligence modifier as your spellcasting ability modifier, so it would be in the Damagoth's best interest to avoid spells that require attack rolls or have a save for characters that aren't intelligence based like artificers or wizards. So, and he would do this so that the target would use the spell very often. However, for wizards and artificers, this is going to be different, and there's going to be a lot more spells open that they can use. So, for the regular Damagoth, we have spells level 1 through 3 to work with, and it would be really easy to ignore level 1 and 2 spells. It'd be super easy to just say level 3s are level 3s because they're better than level 1s and 2s. So, it, we're only going to give level 3s so that your target uses it a lot, and so it's worth the 2d6 damage. But I believe there are actually a lot of level 1 and level 2 spells that are absolutely worth taking this damage for, and absolutely worth casting every day. Starting with first level spells, I think the first one that comes to mind for me is Bless. Bless is just a party buff for three people that can last for a long time. So it is going to be great, and I think it's worth the 2d6 in many cases, because you can buff three of your allies, including yourself, if you want to. This also doesn't require a saving throw or any intelligence at all, or any spellcasting modifier at all, so it is going to be a great spell to give to everybody. This is also going to be especially great when you give it to a martial class that doesn't have to have their spells competing with concentration for anything else. So this is going to be amazing because they can just concentrate that on that and not have to worry about anything else. And as you keep leveling up, the HP cost is going to keep going down in proportion to your total HP, so you will be using it every single day. Next is Silvery Barbs. As you know, Silvery Barbs is just amazing. Everybody that I've talked to or heard about says it's just really incredible, and it would definitely be worth 2d6. Especially considering that you can change the outcome of a hit from an enemy that can reduce the damage taken by way more than 2d6, so it's definitely going to be worth it. Hex, I think, is another spell that's also great to put on here. Same as Bless, you give it to a martial class and that's the only thing they have to concentrate on, it's going to do great. And because they do an extra d6 for every attack for a full hour, while only sacrificing 2d6 health. This is going to be a great spell and it's going to give extra damage output to your martial classes or your spellcasters, and it is just going to be an overall good spell. Not to mention the disadvantage on one type of skill check, which you can base a lot of combos off of. Because you're not burning up a spell slot on Hex in this way, it is going to be great to also use it in out-of-combat situations. Even that 2d6 damage is still going to be worth it out-of-combat. We made another video about the creative uses of Hex in and out-of-combat, so make sure to check that out if you're looking for uh, what to do on with that. 
Moving on to second level spells, there are three that stand out to me. First is Gift of Gab. While Gift of Gab is not a combat spell, and it is an only an out of combat spell, I can see it being used a lot, especially by high charisma characters. It has no save, no ability score needed. It can just be useful. However, because it is niche, it might not be used a lot, so therefore it might not be the Damagos go-to to give out to somebody. Next is Suggestion. Suggestion is too good of a spell not to put on this list. Even if you give it to somebody with bad intelligence and they have a really low DC, save DC, I think they'll still try it quite a bit just because of how amazing Suggestion is. However, if you give this to an intelligence-based character like a wizard or an artificer or anybody else with an intelligence that's not zero or negative, I can see them using this a lot because it is just such a great spell. Next is Wither and Bloom. Wither and Bloom is great on this because you can deal the damage and heal at the same time. So you sacrifice a little bit of your life in order to deal good damage regardless of if they save or not and allow you or one of your allies to be healed in combat. I think this would be a good trade-off that would get used quite a lot. Even though you're losing more health than you're gaining, you're still doing damage, which is awesome. And moving on to third level spells, the first one that I noticed was Animate Dead. To me, Animate Dead fits really thematically with the Damagoth Pact, and also seems like a worthwhile spell to have that the Damagoth can give. I can see it being used quite a bit, especially by a darker, edgier character. I'm pretty sure every party has one of those. And essentially, you just give up some of your health 2d6 to get a bonus action attack every turn through your summons. And you also get a meat shield in between you and your enemies, so this could be particularly good for spellcasters that don't already have access to animate dead, or just want to animate more dead. Next I can see is Bestow Curse. Bestow Curse is definitely going to be used more by high intelligence characters because it has a saving throw, but on any character with any plus 2 intelligence, I think it would be a really good spell to have. It would be definitely worth that damage. I think another one is Summon Undead, just like Animate Undead, however it does require concentration and uses the intelligence modifier to hit things and for other abilities like that. So it's not quite as good as Animate Dead on a martial class, but for a spellcaster it would still be good. Another one to mention is Vampiric Touch. Because Vampiric Touch is a healing spell, you can take the 2d6 damage and then heal for more than that after. And it also gives you extra damage output. It's just going to be good overall. However, this does use your spell modifier to hit, so it is going to be for higher intelligence classes and characters. I wouldn't put Revivify on the list of the best spells to give out because it is not going to be used very often. So, because, you know, how often is somebody dying that you have to revive them? I think there's other spells that are going to use more often. And secondly, because this spell specifically ignores the material components for spells, it's really good for balancing reasons to just not give out Revivify as one of the Damagoth spells. However, if you as a DM want to give your party a way to cast the spell, maybe make the cost of casting it through this pact more than just the 2d6 damage. This has been my analysis of the Damagoth's Pact of Pain and which spells would be best for him to give out to his Pactees. Do you disagree with this list? Do you agree with it? What can be done better? Are there different suggestions? Let us know in the comments below. This has been D&D Daily and we are releasing one new video every single day. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see all our new content. See you on the next one.